After weeks of speculation, it has now been confirmed Red Bull's technical director Pierre Wachet has announced the team's decision to exclude Adrian Newey from all technical meetings. Newey, a pivotal figure in Red Bull's dominance with Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen, is set to leave the team at the start of F1 2025. This news has sparked intense discussion in the paddock, raising questions about the potential impact on Red Bull's future performance. Newey's exclusion marks a significant shift in the team's internal dynamics. There were already whispers suggesting that Newey had been gradually sidelined, focusing more on the RB17 hypercar programme rather than F1. However, Wache's confirmation underscores a deliberate strategy to phase him out of the core F1 operations. The paddock is rife with speculation about what this means for Red Bull and how they will cope without the genius who has been instrumental in their success. To understand the full impact of Adrian Newey's departure, it's crucial to delve into the context surrounding this decision. Newey, a cornerstone of Red Bull's technical prowess, hinted at a fresh start with another team during an interview recently with his manager Eddie Jordan. Rumours are rife that he has already signed a contract with Ferrari, further fueling the speculation. Red Bull's team principal, Christian Horner, has initiated the process of stripping Newey of his data access and excluding him from technical meetings. Wache is seen as Newey's effective replacement within Red Bull's technical structure and is also credited with the recent success of the team, a move criticised by Newey's wife Amanda as a load of hogwash. Wache emphasised the importance of limiting Newey's involvement to protect Red Bull's intellectual property. He pointed out that Newey's legendary status does not exempt him from the protocols applied to any team member leaving for a competitor. This strategic exclusion aims to safeguard the team's future car designs and maintain their competitive edge. The decision, while controversial, reflects Red Bull's broader strategy to adapt and thrive in the post-Newey era. As the paddock debates the ramifications, all eyes are on how this will shape the future of Red Bull and the broader F1 landscape. Zach Brown has levelled criticism at reigning world champions Red Bull and their team principal, Christian Horner, suggesting that Adrian Newey's departure could be just the beginning of a larger shake-up within the team. Brown believes that more dominoes will fall after Newey's exit, hinting at potential underlying issues within the organisation. Recent controversies have put Horner under scrutiny, with allegations of a toxic work culture surfacing within the Red Bull camp. Reports of former employees accusing the team of fostering a hostile environment characterised by long hours and high-pressure situations have raised concerns about staff morale. Despite Horner's assertion that pushing boundaries is necessary for success, Brown argues that the journey and working environment are equally important. In response to these allegations, Christian Horner vehemently denies any wrongdoing, dismissing the claims as mere sour grapes from disgruntled ex-employees. However, critics point out that this isn't the first time Red Bull has faced controversy regarding its work culture. The question remains, are these accusations valid, or are they part of a smear campaign aimed at destabilising one of F1's powerhouses? Max Verstappen has also weighed in on the controversy, firing back at McLaren CEO Zach Brown's suggestion that Newey's departure could lead to a talent drain at Red Bull. Verstappen sees Brown's comments as an attempt to stir trouble within the team, stating, he obviously wants to stir things up. I see the headlines, but I don't even click on them. Verstappen acknowledges that Red Bull's success makes its staff attractive to rival teams, but he downplays the significance of Newey's departure as a catalyst for a mass exodus. He highlights that many Red Bull employees are on long-term contracts, suggesting that the team's stability remains intact despite the recent developments. Wache, speaking to Sky F1 at Imola, underscored the risks of retaining Newey during his transition phase. He pointed out that Newey, despite his legendary status, must be treated like any other departing employee to prevent the leakage of critical car data. At the moment, as he has the potential to go to a competitor like every lever, it doesn't matter about your name, there is a risk to pick up some IP on the current car, and the future car even more, Wache stated. This cautious approach is part of a broader strategy to maintain Red Bull's competitive edge. Wache acknowledged the irreplaceable nature of Newey's expertise, but stressed the team's readiness to face the future without him. It's a loss. When you lose somebody as big as him, clearly his experience will be missing, but we've tried to work without him in some areas for some time already, Wache explained. 
He believes Red Bull's strong technical team can uphold their success, even in Newey's absence. One major concern surrounding Adrian Newey's departure is whether it could trigger a mass exodus of staff and even Max Verstappen from the team. However, Christian Horner has downplayed fears that Verstappen might leave Red Bull following Newey's exit. The team boss firmly denied that Verstappen has a clause in his contract tied to Newey's presence. When questioned during the Miami GP weekend, Verstappen confirmed that Newey's departure had not made him reconsider his future at Red Bull. In an interview with Sky Sports F1, Horner reinforced this sentiment, stating, You report those rumblings every week, but he's still here. Look, Max is very happy in the team. He's got a wonderful group of engineers around him. He's got a great car. He's in the best car on the grid. He's driving in the form of his life. Horner emphasised that the relationship between Verstappen and the team remains strong, and the planning process for Newey's departure has been thorough and well-structured, not a knee-jerk reaction. Despite Newey stepping back from his role as chief technical officer, Red Bull retains a strong technical lineup, including technical director Pierre Wachet, head of aerodynamics Enrico Balbo, and head of performance engineering Ben Waterhouse, who have all signed on an extension with the team recently. Horner assured that the team's structure would remain intact, stating Adrian's role was unique. Adrian is unique. He drew on a drawing board and the way he operated was totally unique. He didn't have anybody report to him. He was a free spirit within the organisation. Horner concluded by highlighting the stability and depth within Red Bull's technical team, expressing confidence that the organisation will continue to thrive even in Newey's absence. The organisation stays exactly as it is. We've got strength and stability and strength in depth and we're grateful for the time and the shape that he's left the technical team in, he explained. The prospect of Newey moving to Ferrari, potentially forming a super team with Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc, adds another layer of intrigue. Hamilton's switch to Ferrari, announced earlier this year, promises a formidable alliance. Asked if he fears Newey joining Ferrari, Wache responded, I'm not worried, but I'm worried about Ferrari, and McLaren anyway. The implications for Red Bull are significant, as Newey's design genius could dramatically enhance Ferrari's competitiveness. Wache expressed a nuanced view on replacing Newey, emphasising that Red Bull's success is a collective effort rather than the result of a single individual's brilliance. I'm not here to replace him. I'm here to make sure that the team is working together, that we have the right direction technically, Wache stated. This philosophy of teamwork underscores Red Bull's confidence in their broader technical staff. Interestingly, Lewis Hamilton, who is also set to leave his team, is taking a different approach. Despite his impending move to Ferrari in 2025, Hamilton remains deeply involved in Mercedes' development plans. This dual commitment has sparked debates about the appropriateness of Red Bull's early exclusion of Newey. Hamilton's continued engagement with Mercedes, despite his future switch, contrasts sharply with Newey's phased exclusion. Hamilton admitted, maybe I shouldn't be doing that, acknowledging the potential conflict of interest. However, his unwavering commitment to Mercedes' success is evident. He continues to participate in crucial meetings and factory work, aiming to help the team reclaim its former glory. I want the team to excel and succeed regardless of whether I am here or not, Hamilton declared, reflecting his dedication to the sport. The contrasting strategies of Red Bull and Mercedes pose a critical question. Should Red Bull exclude Newey early? or should they follow Mercedes' lead in leveraging his expertise until the very end? Red Bull's decision to phase out Newey is driven by the desire to protect their intellectual property, but it also means losing his valuable input during a crucial development phase as competitors get closer to the reigning world champions. McLaren has already outperformed them in a race in Miami and came tantalisingly close in Imola, while Ferrari also promises to bring more upgrades to close the gap. Mercedes' approach with Hamilton suggests a different philosophy, prioritising immediate performance gains and the transfer of knowledge even as the departure looms. As both teams navigate these transitions, the F1 community is left to ponder which strategy will ultimately prove more successful. Share your thoughts on Red Bull's decision and whether they should reconsider their approach to Newey's exclusion.